welcome to another episode of Untold Legends, where we explore the stories found within the worlds of video games, movies, comic books, and anything in between. Last time in the Mortal Kombat lore series, we detailed the story of Katana's sister, the monstrous half tarkatan clone, Melina, including her origin as another palette swap, her growing jealousy and thirst for revenge against Katana, and her struggle to take the throne of Shao Kahn for herself. Today, we're covering the history of one of Mortal Kombat's most savage characters, and one of its most prominent punching bags, Baraka. Takata demands respect, Shao Kahn. You get the back of my hand. We are done fearing you. I've always been a fan of the less human, more monster-like characters in the series, and Baraka fits that mold. He may have some human features, but he's actually very far from being human, being a member of an outworld race known as the Tarkata, or Tarkatans, beast-like creatures that in the classic timeline were said to be originally bred from a humanoid species of outworld citizens mixed with netherrealm demons, armed with sharp teeth just like Melina, and built-in blades to decimate his foes. He's appeared throughout the series via multiple games, and even appeared outside the video game universe. Back in the 90s in Malibu Comics' Mortal Kombat runs, now mostly non-canon materials, Baraka appeared several times, even getting his own story, where he has to protect a mutant child from attacks. A decent story that in no way fits in the currently existing universe. He's had some live-action appearances too, starting with the Mortal Kombat Annihilation movie, the infamous sequel to the original. He shows up in one scene fighting against Liu Kang in a mask that actually doesn't look too horrible, better than any of the CG in the movie, and hilariously when he dies he transforms into rain. I'm serious, you can watch the movie and you see this. Liu Kang kicks him into the flames and the editing in the movie was so bad that they simply reused the same shot of rain falling in the movie from earlier. It's quite hilarious. The Mortal Kombat Legacy web series included Baraka as one of Shao Kahn's generals invading Edenia, and the Mortal Kombat Rebirth pitch from 2010 had an insanely different version of Baraka, a former plastic surgeon called Dr. Alan Zane. He accidentally killed a patient, and being a failed surgeon made him go crazy, and he became a serial killer after he surgically implanted blades into his arms. It's bizarre to say the least. Codename. Baraka. Originally, Baraka was thought of by Mortal Kombat co-creator John Tobias as a quote, savage barbarian demon warrior named Rokuro, seeking to bring respect and pride back to his race. Eventually, the final form of this idea resulted in Goro in the first game, and Baraka failed to appear in the original. Later, Baraka was reconceptualized as a bald masked ninja, armed with hook swords and went through several design changes afterwards. His hook swords were eventually taken away and given to Cabal as his main weapons, and inspired by Marvel Comics Wolverine, Baraka was given sharp metal blades. While brainstorming his final look, some of the game's designers found a Nosferatu mask in a local costume shop. They bought it, painted it, and attached fake fingernails as the teeth painted silver. Richard Divizio portrayed the character in-game, and his final design was introduced in Mortal Kombat 2. In the Mortal Kombat universe, Baraka is often seen as an enforcer and military leader working for whoever dons the most power, sometimes shown to be loyal to a specific leader, other times working for himself and his people planning to betray his leader. With the Tarkatans being such a deadly race that attacks their targets in large numbers, they gained the attention of the outworld ruler Shao Kahn, and he subjugated their entire race into his service. Baraka was considered among the fiercest of his people, and was made a general of Shao Kahn's Tarkatan armies, used to conquer other the realms and keep the outworld populace under control. After Liu Kang defeated Shang Tsung in the original Mortal Kombat, Shao Kahn planned to hold a second tournament in Outworld, and enacted his plan for revenge by luring Earthrealm warriors into Outworld. While the Earthrealmers celebrated their victory in Mortal Kombat, Baraka was sent with an army of Tarkatan warriors to attack the Wuxi Academy. The horde of Tarkatans decimated the innocent monks, leaving Liu Kang and Kung Lao sifting through the remains and swearing vengeance against Outworld. Baraka was also sent alongside 
challenged Shang Tsung and a group of his warriors to attack Johnny Cage, but Earthrealm forces fought back and Raiden appeared to stop the battle. They accepted the terms for a second tournament and entered Outworld during the events of Mortal Kombat 2. During the tournament, Baraka fought for Shao Kahn, but secretly had plans to overthrow him and rule in his place. The Tarkatans were growing tired of serving Shao Kahn, and Baraka dreamed of being Emperor. He attempted to recruit Melina for his plans and saw her as a possible queen for himself, but before the plans could be finalized, Melina was killed by Katana. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat 2 ending, Baraka defeated Earthrealm warriors, killed Shao Kahn and his generals, and took over. His Tarkatans rebelled against Khan's remaining forces, and they reclaimed the respect they demanded under the rule of King Baraka. In the canon version of events, Liu Kang defeated Shao Kahn in combat, and for the first time, he was seen as being vulnerable. During the events of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy, Shao Kahn attempted revenge by invading Earthrealm directly with his armies after stealing the souls of humanity. In his absence, rebellions against Shao Kahn were forming in the lowlands of Outworld, and Baraka was sent to stop them. After destroying the rebellions, Baraka traveled to Earthrealm and joined his master during the events of Mortal Kombat Trilogy. During the invasion, Baraka slaughtered any remaining humans he could find, but ultimately, Liu Kang once again defeated Shao Kahn, and the Emperor was left severely weakened and went into hiding. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat Trilogy ending, Baraka feared Shao Kahn's wrath for failing to kill the Earthrealmers, and feared that he would be blamed for the invasion's failure. While Shao Kahn was recovering, Baraka struck and murdered him, then fled back into the nomadic ruins where he came from. But in the canon version of events, instead of attacking Shao Kahn, Baraka fled into other realms and met the evil sorcerer Quan Chi in Edenia. Quan Chi had plans to help his master, the Elder God of Death Shinnok, return from the Netherrealm and take over all the realms. Baraka saw a new powerful master in Shinnok, a master that could offer him protection against Shao Kahn, and Baraka decided to join Quan Chi in his quest. During the events of Mortal Kombat Gold, Shinnok returned and attacked the realms. Edenia fell to his power, and his demon army threatened the rest of the realms. Earthrealm warriors traveled into Edenia and challenged Shinnok to save everyone, and a brutal battle against Shinnok's forces ensued. In his non-canon ending, Barak killed Shinnok per Quan Chi's request, and found himself in an empty realm ruled by Quan Chi. Enter! I said enter, Baraka. Have no fear. Our betrayal is complete. I have dealt with those once loyal to Shinnok. This victory is ours! You bask in your newfound power on the throne of Queen Sindel, while I am forced to hide in the shadows. Who is it you are hiding from? The Elder Gods are dead. Raiden is dead. And thanks to you, Shinnok is dead. Everyone is dead. Yes, everyone in this forsaken realm is dead. How do we rule a realm with no one in it? This war was not about holding court to mortals. It was about obtaining power. I now possess that power. And I am forced to live out my existence in a dead realm with a madman. <laughs> now, sorcerer, you will pay with your life. I haven't a life to give, you fool. What? In the canon version of events, Baraka fought for his new master, but even his raw, savage strength wasn't enough to prevent Liu Kang from defeating him and sending Shinnok plummeting back into the Netherrealm. After Shinnok's defeat during the events of Mortal Kombat Deception, Raiden, Quan Chi, and Shang Tsung were forced to team up against Onaga the Dragon King, the resurrected original Emperor of Outworld. His power was beyond any comprehension and Baraka found yet another new master in Onaga. Feeling that Onaga was so unstoppable, Baraka agreed to serve him into victory with his Tarkatan army. Katana had imprisoned Melina, and Baraka freed her from her prison, and recruited her into the ranks of Onaga's army. Baraka was ordered to ravage Outworld as a distraction, while Edenia's army took arms against him. But Melina had been posing as Katana and sent her armies to battle Baraka's army, all a distraction to keep them away from Onaga. But these attacks resulted in a large number of Tarkatan deaths, and Baraka was grown 
growing angrier with Melina. While his people died, Melina was posing as royalty and ordered attacks on them. She knew that Baraka was aware of her real identity and formed plans to get rid of him. She invited him to meet her in Outworld's ancient beetle lair to form a truce, but Baraka was no fool and sent another in his place. The Tarkatan he sent was attacked by Melina and fed to carnivorous beetles, and Baraka swore that he would kill her. His scouts reported that Earthrealm's Lin Kuei warrior Sub-Zero was nearby, and he sent a group to attack him while he followed Melina's trail. In his non-canon ending, Baraka tracked Melina by her scent, and since she was a half-breed, her sense of smell wasn't as developed. He stealthily attacked her and tore her apart with his blades, but in the canon version of events, he never found Melina, and Onaga was defeated by Shijinko, the man that accidentally resurrected him. With Onaga out of the way, a new threat to all of reality rose to power. If the elemental monster Blaze was defeated, the winner would claim his power and be able to influence the entire universe. Baraka joined the forces of darkness to fight against the forces of light in the final battle and planned to claim the power for his own reasons. During the battle, he fought fiercely against Kung Lao. non-canon Mortal Kombat Armageddon ending, Baraka destroyed Blaze and used his power to become an even more fierce warrior and gave Melina a choice. <laughs> within him, Baraka would never again serve another. Summoning Shao Kahn and Onaga before him atop the pyramid, he gave them a choice. Submit to Lord Baraka or die. They responded by attacking the Tarkatan. In a flash, Baraka's blades grew to twice their normal length and pierced his former masters through their hearts. Flinging their bodies down the side of the pyramid, Baraka turned his attention to a more important matter. Who would be his queen? He gave Melina a choice. She chose wisely. In the canon version of events, during the final climb to the top of the pyramid, Baraka was sent flying by Shao Kahn's hammer, but survived and was ultimately killed by Kung Lao's razor-sharp hat, split right down the middle. And Shao Kahn claimed the power of Blaze. Raiden sent the messages to the past to prevent these future events, and altered the history of Mortal Kombat by doing so. In this new altered timeline, Baraka was present during the original tournament, and his first opponent was the cocky Johnny Cage. That's it. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh yeah! I'm so pretty! And I'm taking you down, I'm taking you down, I'm taking you out, I'm taking you out, and I'm taking you out for dinner. <laughs> Ugh. Now for your second challenge, Mr. Cage. Baraka! Hmm, <laughs> okay. Nice makeup. But is it really necessary? Whoa! They will taste your flesh. Johnny Cage wins. Man, I love those blades. My producer has got to meet you. We're doing Tommy Scissor Fists and. Unlike the original timeline, the Tarkatans in this one weren't a hybrid of Outworld citizens and Netherrealm demons. Their realm just happened to be one of the many absorbed by Shao Kahn over the years, and his race was forced into service. Baraka lost his battle against Johnny Cage, and Cage spared his life. He was taken away and eventually recovered, and later found himself spying on the Lin Kuei Cyrax, speaking with Raiden. The Lin Kuei had been hired by Shang Tsung to assassinate Earthrealm warriors, and Raiden attempted to convince Cyrax to join him and his combatants. Baraka reported back to Shang Tsung with what he had seen, and he sent Shiva and Baraka to kill Cyrax. But Baraka would suffer his second defeat. What are you doing? I am not here to fight you. I'm assigned to kill Johnny Cage. Shang Tsung no longer has need of you. What do you mean? He is terminating your agreement. And you. Cyrax wins. Ugh, this fight is not over. You mean to finish me? You couldn't even stop the actor. Cyrax wins. Now this fight is over. 
At the end of the first tournament, Liu Kang defeated Shang Tsung, and Baraka helped drag him in front of Shao Kahn for judgment. Shao Kahn was furious with his failure, and ordered his execution, and Baraka held him down to suffer his fate. But the sorcerer convinced Shao Kahn to challenge Earthrealm to his second tournament, and he accepted. Similar to the original timeline, Baraka and the Tarkatans attacked the Wuxi Academy to lure them to Outworld. The plan worked, and Raiden traveled to Outworld with Johnny Cage and Jax to speak with Shao Kahn, and Kahn immediately ordered the beginning of the tournament. For the first First match, Baraka was summoned once again to face off against Jax. Wait, this is a tournament! Ah, the Earthrealm delegation has arrived. And we have a volunteer for first combat. What? The tournament will begin! Jackson Briggs, you will face Baraka! <laughs> My blade will find your heart. Got you! Oh yeah! Jax wins. You shouldn't be running with those. Baraka yet again failed to win a match, but was still allowed to remain as one of Shao Kahn's enforcers. Kano of Earthrealm's Black Dragon Clan was also making deals with Khan's army and supplying Earthrealm weapons. Due to his constant failures, Baraka was sent to guard the weapons in Khan's armory, but encountered Jade on her way to rescue an imprisoned katana. That is all of them. That is no toy! It belongs to Shang Tsung! We are finished. Return to your post. Stand aside. I will see Katana. No one enters the tower. You are an excellent guard dog, Baraka. But you must learn to heal. I do not take orders from you. Jade wins. Good boy. Uh, uh, Adenians have no loyalty. Blind loyalty is not a good thing as I have learned. You must keep your eyes open to anticipate the finishing blow. What are you talking about? You make it too easy. Later, Baraka also witnessed Shao Kahn's defeat at the hands of Liu Kang at the end of the second tournament. But Shao Kahn survived, and his recovery was sped up by dark magic, and Baraka continued to pledge his loyalty. As in the original timeline, Shao Kahn invaded Earthrealm, and Baraka was sent to lead the Tarkatan armies, equipped with the guns purchased from Kano. During the invasion, Baraka never encountered Earthrealm combatants, and in his non-canon Mortal Kombat 9 ending, he killed an imposter posing as Shao Kahn. Shokan and Centaur alike were enraged that Baraka, Shao Kahn's trusted enforcer, had turned on their master and killed him just as Earthrealm was within their grasp. But their anger turned to admiration as the lifeless body of Shao Kahn transformed into that of the treacherous sorcerer Shang Tsung. Shang had attempted to claim the realm for himself by posing as Shao Kahn. The deception had not fooled Baraka. He had recognized Shang Tsung's scent and torn out his throat. With Earthrealm finally in Shao Kahn's control, Baraka's loyalty and bold action were rewarded. The Tarkatans replaced the Centaur as the Emperor's favored race. In the canon version of events, Shao Kahn was defeated and Earthrealm was saved, and Baraka returned to Outworld. During the events of Mortal Kombat X, Baraka wasn't involved in the main storyline, and Melina took over Outworld as its new ruler. Responding to her newfound power, Baraka agreed to pledge his loyalty to her, but she was removed from power by Kotal and his traitors, and Baraka attempted to defend his empress, but failed for a final time. I succeed Shao Kahn by his decree! Succeed him you have. But Outworld demands new leadership. From you, Aztec fool. Kill him! <laughs> this one serves Melina no longer! Still, you found Melina. Shao Kahn conquered my realm. 
I owe him my loyalty. I honor his will. Baraka was dead, ending his involvement in Mortal Kombat X. Shinnok resurrected and was defeated in this new timeline also, and his mother Kronika, a titan responsible for the flow of time, decided to create a new timeline, crafted by her, a new perfect era devoid of Raiden and Liu Kang. While she worked to construct her new era, heroes and villains of the past were brought together to the present, and Baraka was resurrected from a time where he was loyal to Shao Kahn. Khan was horrified to discover that he was no longer ruler of Outworld in the future, and attacked and Baraka fought for his emperor. Stupid Oshkek, destroying your future, crossing Shao Kahn. It is you with no future, Baraka. Your Takatans are dead. Impossible. They allied with Melina against me. Persist, and you will die again. <laughs> Filthy Takatan. Kotal Khan successfully defended his reign as Emperor of Outworld, and Baraka escaped with Shao Kahn and his forces. Kronika promised Khan a place in his new era, and they agreed to help her. Kotal Khan had mostly wiped out the Tarkatans from the Outworld, but Kronika's manipulation of time returned them, and they formed a camp where Shao Kahn was temporarily hiding. Kotal Khan and Jade began searching for him, and Kotal expressed his hatred for the savage Tarkatans by gathering them up and attempting to execute them. But Jade stopped him, and Khan captured Kotal to be sent for execution in the Colosseum. Kitana, also resurrected from the past, was attempting to gather her own army to end Shao Kahn once and for all and take her place as Empress of Outworld. The Tarkatans had been destroyed under Kotal's rule, but Kitana needed the Tarkatans' trust and loyalty to defeat Khan. Yes! Kotal has made his intentions plain! <laughs> Baraka, please listen. No more Tarkatans need to die. Kotal Khan threatens all Tarkatans. In the new era, Shao Kahn will rule. Hear me, Baraka. I speak truth. Speak. You've earned the chance. Shao Kahn has pitted Outworld's peoples against one another for millennia. And for what? The honor of dying in his wars? We must fight for each other, Baraka. Not with each other. Kotal wants us dead. He said as much to my face. Aid us, and I'll make sure you sit at Kotal's table. Which do you prefer, Baraka? To be Shao Kahn's slave, or Kotal Kahn's trusted ally? No one has ever made Tarkatan set an offer. But these are your words, not his. Help me save Kotal Khan. We'll ask him together. <laughs> he offers less. I'll slit his throat. If he offers less, Baraka, I'll help you. Katana earned Baraka's trust, and together with Baraka and the Tarkatans, and Shiva and her Shokans, they set out to rescue Kotal from being executed. An act that would end the threat of Shao Kahn and establish a place of respect for Baraka and Outworld's new leadership. Baraka, Shiva, I have not served your people's well, yet still you aided me. I will not forget. We don't need charity. We will share an Outworld's rule. That is up to her now. 
The throne is yours. You have united Outworld, Kitana Khan. I am humbled, Kotal. From this day on, may all our peoples fight together as one. In the final battle against Kronika, Baraka and the Tarkatans fought alongside the newly established Fire God Liu Kang in a Salted or Fortress. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat 11 ending, Baraka is the one that ultimately defeats Kronika and crafted his own future that benefited the Tarkatans as a whole. Kronika's power was mine. Mine to share with the tribe. In the new timeline I built, Tarkatans would be slaves no more. We would rule. We easily took a denier, then Outworld and the Netherrealm. Last, we challenged Earthrealm in mortal combat. Within a thousand years, all realms fell to Tarkatan blades, and we have not run out of meat since. <laughs> In the canon version of events, Liu Kang killed Kronika using his immense new powers and took control of time itself. He crafted a new timeline which has yet to be revealed. Will Baraka once again be a weapon used for war in the new era, or will he keep his place as part of Outworld's leadership? And that is the current history of Baraka. Dreaming of revenge for your future. <laughs> Since you made it to the end of this video, I assume you enjoyed it, so why don't you go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, links in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon or become a channel member. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.